That's not good. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my God! That was horrible. Viewer, viewer, viewer. That pumps, was a I'm fail. So, no, 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 no. Again. Okay. One, two, three. There uh, you go. That's my girl right there. Oh my God! That first one was just embarrassing. Oh, I mean, it was as limp. It's a limp as dick. one could get. It, it was in in severe need of some Viagra. <laughs> or speaking pins. speaking of being in severe need of Viagra viewer. Welcome to iHip News, where we talk about the news that is important to us. Of course, this is our opinion. So those of you that freak out, calm down. Today, you're in for a treat because America's greatest legal mind, <laughs> Pumps, has prepared a great segment on her favorite psychological case study, and that is none other than the raving lunatic, the former president of the United States, which I still cannot believe that those words came out of my mouth. I know. Donald John. Do you remember when we were at the White House? We were visiting the White House, and you looked at it and you go, Mike Lindell was in that building. <laughs> I did. And it was just like, how can that be? That's the one thing that always got to me. Like after January 6th, all the sane people had left Trump. Right. And he's hanging out with the My Pillow guy. Right. And every day the My Pillow guy and that Kraken lawyer and all these just fringe lunatics. And I'm sitting there thinking, that is the Oval Office mm -hmm. and these whack jobs are going in there. And I just thought, man, this is just a total shit show of American democracy right now. Total. Speaking of raving lunatics that have been alkalites of Donald Trump, we've got Ronna Romney McDaniel on the menu today. Oh. Now, this is a woman that has basically bowed down to Trump so much she changed her name. That was the first, your first clue. Since the 2020 election, she has repeatedly stated that it was rigged. You know, that's a great word they love to use. She has directed RNC funds to pay for his legal bills. I mean, damn near bankrupted the RNC. Additionally, she was on the phone when Trump was pressuring the Michigan electors not to certify the 2020 election and went as far as to say, don't sign it and the RNC will pay your legal bills. So that's who we're talking about. She recently stepped down because she refused to put additional funds into his legal defense fund. So he installed his daughter-in-law. But that's a different story. But she has repeatedly called January 6th legitimate political discourse. And we'll just throw ahead on here. Just for a reminder, this is the legitimate political discourse that she refers to. She was all on board with that. So in NBC, Universal's... Wait, one question. She left the RNC. Did Trump force her out and why? Trump forced her out because she, in his opinion, did not come out strongly enough that... He won the 2020 election, instead saying the election was rigged and she would not. <laughs> right. I mean, it sounds crazy. So that's why he forced her out. And because she wouldn't direct 100 percent or damn near to his legal defense funds because he's running out of money. So he put his daughter. -in -law so he in. put his daughter in law in there. So her political legitimate political discourse just goes all through me because I want to remind everybody not only. Did you just see that tape and witness what they did? They were defecating in the United States Capitol. So there's nothing and legitimate. And beating up cops. And beating up cops. I mean, people died. There's nothing legitimate yeah. about it. And I just might remind everyone, if that were members of the black and brown community, Ugh. the entire United States Armed Forces would have been there in two seconds. But that's here and there. That's not today's topic. So now NBC has hired her as a political analyst. Well, you know, I'm a big MSNBC lover. And 
from the top down, and I by that I mean the president of MM, MSNBC has said she will never appear on their air. Morning Joe, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Nicole Wallace, all of them had come out and straight up said that was a mistake. She should never be put in a position to talk about politics because she is clearly such a sycophant. So it remains to be seen, but she did make her first appearance on Meet the Press on NBC Sunday. And this is what she said about the January 6th, quote unquote, hostages, the criminal convicts who have been convicted by a jury and sentenced by a judge that Donald Trump Donald Trump calls hostages, plays the J6 choir and salutes it. Now, this is the first time she's ever distanced herself from Trump. And let's listen to it. But to the question, though, do you disagree with Trump saying he's going to free those who've been charged? I do not think people who committed violent acts on January 6th should be freed. So you disagree with that? He's been saying that for months. Rana, why not speak out earlier? Why just speak out about that now? When you're the RNC chair, you you kind of take one for the whole team. Okay, here's what I want to say about that. Lying about the overthrow of democracy is not taking one for the team. Taking one for the team is when your ex-husband dates a girl that's beautiful, but you tell his ex-wife that your girlfriend, she's really not that cute. (laughs) That's taking one for the team. Right. This is the overthrow of democracy. So I find that offensive. Further, you know, Liz Cheney, we don't have a lot in common with Liz Cheney, but she made this comment, and I think it's worth noting off Twitter. Rana facilitated Trump's corrupt fake electors plot and his efforts to pressure Michigan officials not to certify the legitimate election outcome. She spread his lies and called Je- one six legitimate political discourse. That's not taking one for the team. It's enabling criminals and depravity. I just have to say, I agree with her on all of those things. How is this not disqualifying across the board that if you were a part of an attempt to overthrow a free and fair election in the world's most powerful country, that you get a job at NBC, those jobs should only be be available at Newsmax or Fox where all the other freaks work. I mean, that is, it is so maddening that they are normalizing and putting this up. And here's my problem with it. Oftentimes the media or uh, people on the left will say, we need to figure out how to communicate with Trump supporters. You can't. You can't. It's too far gone. You cannot unless you want to start lying from the minute you open your mouth until the very end. This is not like during Watergate, they didn't have, NBC didn't hire people that worked, you know, as Nixon's right hand man to help understand the crimes that were committed. And that was child's play. Uh, compared to January nothing 6th. compared to this. You're 100% right. And so it's just maddening. And Ronna McDaniel, Romney McDaniel, nobody wants to see her. And if Trump doesn't want to. <laughs> right. That tells you how bad it is. Do you think people that watch NBC want to see this jet stream of bullshit? And it's it's not just that. It's so dangerous that there is an attempt now by the mainstream media to reach out to these Trump supporters, you can't reach out to them. Right. They 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 believe that he won. They believe that he is the second coming of Jesus Christ. They think that there's a mass witch hunt. It's just, it's insanity and you cannot feed it in any way, shape or form. It's kind of like when you're dealing with a person that is an alcoholic or a drug addict, you don't engage in talking to them when they're completely high out of their mind. And so that's what that's what NBC is trying to do is talk to a bunch of crazy people and it's just not going to work. No, it's not going to work. And I- Everyone on Twitter and all across news articles has just been up in arms about it. My whole thing is, I agree that they should have a Republican commentator, should they so desire. 
My problem is you have to have someone that it's not involved in lies from the top down for years, who has not enabled his behavior for years. And I also think there's a difference between the Republican point of view and lies and Right. Platforming the Republican point of view, for the most part these days, is just lies. Well, it's important to point out that when you say the Republican point of view, a lot of people are thinking of like maybe 10 years ago. Correct. Right now, the Republican point of view is Donald Trump. Correct. The last three election cycles, their nominee has been Trump, Trump, and now Trump. So in my opinion, it is dangerous and an attempt to normalize egregious criminal behavior and gaslighting to a fascist scale to even have a person who is an active member of the Republican Party on the mainstream news because what they're going to do is lie. Right. And as a journalist, these journalists are in a very precarious position, but they have a duty to report the truth. Right. So if you have this gal on here and she says, I was taking one for the team, the follow-up question should be, you are literally being obsequious to an unhinged lunatic. And now you want us to sit here and say that this is what everybody has to do around Trump? I mean, it, it, well, and when you start examining your team, if all your team does is lie and commit crimes, maybe you're on the wrong fucking team. All their team does, they have one job, and it is to tell Donald Trump right. everything that he wants to hear. You're the best golfer. You're, you're the most attractive. <laughs> you're the most attractive. <laughs> You're athletic. You are you're in the best physical shape that any physician has ever seen. You won the popular vote right. every single time you've ever run. You had the biggest inauguration, biggest crowd. Your hair's fantastic. You place perfect phone calls. You've never committed a crime. Right. You're the richest motherfucker that has ever lived. Your dick is not small. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they have to do. But it's like we're all so desensitized to Trump that even now the mainstream media is enabling this bullshit by having her on. And it is so incredibly dangerous. Every single time a lie comes out of somebody's mouth on the news, in a news interview, it needs to immediately be followed up with, that is a lie. If you continue down this path, we're discontinuing the interview. And cut them off at every single turn. No, I totally agree. And I almost think you can't even call them Republicans anymore. Nowadays, they're no, just MAGA. It's important to call them Republicans because they are are Republicans. It's very important to call them Republicans. Do not give Republicans a hall pass pumps. The no, last right. three election cycles, their candidate has been Trump, Trump, and Trump, and they have voted for him in the millions, tens of millions. This is the Republican Party. Do not give them a hall pass. Do not. They don't deserve it. If you're a Republican, you are a Trumper. And if you're not a Trumper, then you need to say, I'm no longer a Republican. As so I, that's many the have. way I see it. That's the way I see it. Well, I just think the Republican Party, the people that are holding out for the Republican Party of Reagan to come back can kiss off because it's never coming back. Well, it's been taken over. I would argue that all of those decisions led to this. Right. This did not happen no, in it a did vacuum. Not. It started with demeaning the poor over criminalizing drug offenders, um, all the pro-life shit, all of this stuff didn't just happen with Trump. These are Republican Party goals that this nut helped them realize. So right. it is very important to remain labeling these people as Republicans because a lot of their dreams and goals are being realized. I tell you, he's not upset about the overturning of Roe and the criminalizing of all of this stuff and demonizing the poor is Liz Cheney. I no. find a lot of stuff she says about Donald Trump, I agree with her on, but policy-wise, she has even said, I agree with him on policy. She voted with him something like 90% of the 98%. time. So we can't get deluded no, here. No, I'm not a fan of Liz Cheney. But the, I, but the Republican Party is the Republican Party, and they are the party of Trump. He's just their imperfect vessel. Right. Well, he def if they wanted an imperfect vessel, they found him because he is a stark raving lunatic. 
And it's mm-hmm. and he's a Republican and all the people that vote for him are Republicans. And we can't let them off the hook on that. It is very important to identify these lunatics. MAGA and Republicanism are the same thing. Make attorneys get attorneys. That's what they say. <laughs> all right. Stick to us for more hot takes. We will see you when we feel like it. 